Thank you very much, Uri. Uh, so this talk will be also in English. That's the, the best I can do. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. I'll uh, run through this. I have a 15-minute slot, so you guys have to pay attention. Uh, and then maybe at the end we'll be able to do one or two nice questions. So the, the talk is about, uh, you know, as the previous uh, person also mentioned, uh, vectors uh, seems to be a popular topic. And I'll make a case for really putting them at the center of your system. Uh, why? Because, well, many of the use cases that you are thinking about to do you know, with your data and your users and you know, different entities that you care about in your business, um, to build them really well and build them smart, um, all of those are applications for uh, vector embeddings. Um, so the, the scope is really large for this technology. And you know, it's also nothing new, as, as, as we heard. You know, embeddings have been used for a long time by the, the big tech and uh, the specialist uh, companies. Uh, here are some quotes. Um, pretty much any kind of consumer experience where uh, there is a, any kind of uh, matching problem or content discovery problem or you know, recommendation or search nowadays uh, is powered by uh, you know, the system encoding the items that are being discovered and the users that are discovering them by uh, this data structure. So nothing new. Fun stat, in 2020, 10% of Google.com searches uh, were powered by a vector index. So no longer just a reverse uh, you know, keyword lookup. Uh, so, you know, this is a well-established uh, kind of solution to many problems. Um, and, okay, you cannot see this, but if you go to vdbs.superlinked.com, um, you'll find a table where we crowdsourced a feature comparison of vector databases. Um, there is, uh, I believe, 37 rows in that table, uh, and something like 30 uh, different features that... Uh, uh, the community sort of uh, helps us maintain, and now, nowadays also the vendors uh, send us updates when they launch new features or support more dimensions in their database. Uh, and this is, some, this is a symptom of this uh, current time where people have discovered that you can build all kinds of uh, cool stuff in embeddings. Um, and it seems that for the newcomers in the space, the solution tends to be that uh, you know, they grab a pre-trained uh, language model and stringify their data, feed it into the model, and get the embedding out. Um, and you know, that's certainly an interesting place to start, and you can build cool demos that way, but uh, it's not quite the whole story, right? Because if you look at any kind of database uh, powering a real production you know, enterprise system, it's not going to just have text in it, right? Um, the enterprise data is complex, and so language models uh, are not enough. Um, and here I just have an example to visualize that. So here is a house listing, right? You might be a, a service that uh, you know, uh, basically has a marketplace of uh, real estate, and this real estate is described with all kinds of different properties. And yes, some of it is text, right? Uh, but much of it is, uh, you know, beyond images, what people consider multimodal data, right? Much of it is actually structured information. There might be bids in your ad system, as we heard. Um, there might be, you know, prices and price history and time series data and graph data, uh, all kinds of different uh, signals that we have about the entities that the business cares about. And these signals are not really suitable to be encoded by a language model because these signals are not uh, language. So somehow to build a vector powered system, you need um, a more sophisticated way to encode the data that you care about. Um, and you know, that's kind of just on the surface, right? Like if you have seen any kind of uh, enterprise data model, there is uh, even a lot more that goes into it, right? There'll be more tables, more relationships between them uh, again, uh, proper solution is needed to encode complex objects into embeddings. And if you are kind of thinking about that problem, 
basically it has two halves, right, that uh, cannot really be separated. Uh, firstly, you have to collect the data that uh, you have on your objects, right? All these different signals, all these clicks and time series and uh, relationships and the text and so on. So part of the problem will look like an ETL pipeline, ETL system, right? Something that goes into all of those different databases and warehouses where you store information about the entities you want to turn into vectors and do retrieval over. Uh, you'll have to collect that in one place. So that's the ETL half uh, of your system that you are building to solve the problem. And then the second half is a modeling problem, right? How, you know, are you building a custom embedding model that uh, you, know, you feed the feature engineered entity? Um, or you know, uh, are you stringifying everything and using a language model that's the opposite extreme? Uh, or something in between that maybe takes less time than a custom model and uh, actually works compared to just uh, using a language model to do the trick. Right, so, so any solution that uh, you look at uh, needs to have those two uh, aspects to it, right? You cannot solve the problem with just uh, thinking about the model or just building data pipelines, right? Right, so that's uh, what we spent the last couple of years uh, working on. Uh, we came from, uh, I personally come from ads background. I was a machine learning engineer at uh, YouTube. Uh, specifically in the ads uh, stack um, and for, for a couple of years. And so, so that's my background. We have been through a process of uh, working on infrastructure for recommender systems. Um, and then last year, this kind of thing crystallized out of that, right? We realized that actually within a recommender system stack, one of the valuable components is the encoder, right? That sucks in all the data about the entities and users and uh, figures out how to turn them into efficient and descriptive embeddings. Um, and so we call that component the vector computer. Um, you need something like that. It doesn't have to have our logo on it. Uh, but basically, you have some structured data in your system. You have some unstructured data, most likely as well. Um, you need to ingest all of that. You need to encode it. There will be some index under the hood, right? Either, can you do questions at the end? Okay. Very good. It's more of a spectrum, right? Uh, but if you just imagine a piece of text that somebody submitted in a form, that's more on the unstructured end. Uh, something like a time series might be in between because it describes some specific entity, but it uh, still looks like analog uh, data. Uh, and let's say, uh, you know, categorical property or a, numer or a timestamp, something like that, uh, we might call structured data. Uh, or let's say uh, like a graph structure, uh, things like that. Um, okay, so, and, and there will be, you know, once you kind of make the vectors, um, it's useful to be able to put them into a system that helps you find similar vectors quick, quickly, right? And that's what all the vector database hype is all about. Um, I think some of the hype is justified because indeed you cannot avoid doing this kind of lookup. When you index all your users and all your items, you want to find items uh, that encode similarly to the users that might uh, like them, right? And so doing the similarity lookup is, uh, is a must, right? So you will need one of those. Um, Maybe your existing database already supports this kind of functionality, um, or you look at uh, kind of the new breed of databases that are specifically designed and built around this type of index. Okay, so it's uh, quite likely that sort of, uh, uh, either you are already working on a system that looks somewhat like this, or you will be building a system that looks like this. And then of course there'll be applications, right? Either user experiences you want to power or you know, um, you know, outlier detection system for a fraud system or bidding uh, engine. Um, those would then kind of want to run the queries and get the responses and use those to steer its uh, operation, right? So that's kind of the general blueprint. Um, and then, you know, the kind of uh, slightly sales uh, part of the presentation starts. Uh, so we have been working on such system. Um, we have just very recently announced a couple partnerships. Uh, this is just another way to make that previous picture, right? On the left side, 
uh, is the data that should be turned into vectors. On the right side is where the vectors go once we make them. And then up here is basically platforms that help us uh, surface this uh, functionality and this component to you know, deploy it against uh, actual use cases, right? Um, so those are the kind of three buckets of partners for us. And this is the first three that we announced with some codes you cannot read uh, because they are too small. But I promise they say very nice things about us. Um, and uh, we have also announced that we raised uh, a seed round uh, with uh, US-based investors. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we raised the pre-seed round about two years ago. And when I was going around London talking about embeddings to London VCs, it was uh, much more difficult. People were not really kind of tracking. Uh, but last year in, in San Francisco, after all the VCs uh, sort of looked at all the vector databases, they were familiar with the topic, uh, and it was uh, much more straightforward. Um, and finally, um, I wanted to call out kind of three people in the room um, that uh, we have been already working with. And, and uh, fir firstly, Uri, who organized the event. We have been collaborating uh, for the last uh, six, six months or so. Um, we have worked with uh, Ellie as the first kind of uh, boots on the ground uh, over there, uh, head of applied research who works out of uh, Israel. Um, my co-founder Ben sits over there. Uh, and uh, we are hiring locally for uh, basically applied research and engineering talent. Uh, so setting, setting up a proper shop. So you know, that's a QR code to our website. Uh, or connect with me afterwards on LinkedIn, and uh, very happy to chat about the uh, opportunities. Thank you very much. There might be one or two questions. Or all clear? You have a junior, sir. Uh, more on the senior side, uh, but uh, maybe you should go chat with Uri. <laughs> Uri, Uri trains them and then we work with them. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yep. How do you decide how to embed the random guy data? It's a good question. Uh, we give you a framework that productizes the process. So uh, one metaphor I can choose is, uh, are you familiar with the ORM systems? ORM? object relational mapping problem, where you have an object and you think in objects and then under the hood, you know, the data is represented with a relational table. Think about superlinked as- a, It sounds like the client needs to do a lot of work. The client needs to still do work, so this is not a magic. Lot of work. That's what I hear. Okay, well, we have a framework where you define, okay, here is how my entities look and how I want to, for each property of those entities, turn them into vectors, and then the framework kind of does the rest. We abstract away all the modeling, we abstract away all the pipeline work, and the interaction with the underlying uh, index. Uh, by the way, the product is open source, so if you have any kind of uh, questions or want to dive deeper, uh, if you go to superlinked.com, there is a GitHub link at the top. Apache 2, free to use. Yeah. If I, take, if I understand, if you do that ORM, you have like an entity, three fields, one is an image, one is a page, three vectors, and then you do like a compute similarity. It's over the three? Yeah, we unit normalize the components. We dimension-wise concatenate them into one big vector, yeah. If you have uh, memory concerns, there is uh, quantization, dimensionality reduction, right? Uh, and then the cool part is that at query time, you can express queries such as, okay, give me things relevant for this query, which also skew popular or skew recent, because those are the things we encode in the vector as well. And then let's say you want to bias the results towards items the user clicked or liked before, you can also express that in the query language. And then under the hood, we, we construct the search vector from that query. We can apply weights to the components and then send it to the underlying index. Yeah, yeah. You can basically control the weights at the query time. 
the index is all normalized and kind of debiased encoding of all the properties of all the entities. Okay, yeah, one more and then. Sorry? Correct, yes. So it's a declarative Python SDK which then compiles down to an executor that's uh, suitable for the workload. So for example, for batch workloads, and this is not in the repo yet, uh, we compile down to Spark. Spark. Yeah, for, for batch, right? So we kind of separated the declaration of the data model and the vectors you want from the executors. So you can you know, use the in-memory executor for a Python notebook type experimentation and then add your executors for running this as a service in your cloud and so on. Yeah. Yeah, we would, yeah, yeah, definitely reach out. You build some cool stuff with the technology. We can, we can make a deal. <laughs> Goes for everybody, of course. All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much.